Before we get started, I want to show you three experimental designs that I made. Hey there, just a quick vid to show you another thermoelectric generator I'm working on. Here's the original one, last video. Two chips, three tea lights, heat sink, all up on a brick. This one's just basically a double size version. Got two heat sinks, and under each one we got two chips. If you haven't seen the last vid, by the way, this is a three volt unit, and even that can run a lot of cool things. I got it running a small table fan. I got it running an AMFM radio. And even a DC light bulb that I put in and converted an AC lamp to DC. So a lot of things you can do with that. This doubles the size and then if you want again you can do the 5 to 6 volts. By the way I'm mainly going to power these with these little homemade oil burners. I'll show you how to make these later. Another cool thing about the new unit is you're not just limited to tea lights like with the old unit but you can use lots of things in here. I mean you can use tea lights, you can use the extended tea lights, you can use these oil burners, the tuna can oil burners for things like vegetable oil, olive oil, even Crisco. But you can also, if you remove the brick, you can use like the glass candles, the votives, and you can use uh, alcohol lamps too, like those, for burning isopropyl alcohols and the ethanol blend fuels, things like that, this, all the oils and those. So it's pretty cool. And probably some other things, like I was thinking about maybe just using liquid paraffin in here too. A lot of things you can put in those. These are the two main chips I'm going to be focusing on, the 27145 and the 12706. I'll also be doing some experiments with these, the 12715 chip. Alright, now I want to show you two or three designs that I worked on before I ended up on the final version of this project. Next thing I did was I designed a stand using three bricks and I dropped some vegetable oil in one of those tuna can vegetable oil burners, put three wicks in and lit them up. And there it is, two chips, three wicks, 2.9 volts. I was hoping to get right around three, so that's good. Then I went up to two oil burners and four chips. Two vegetable oil burners now, four chips, and we're getting a bit over six volts. Okay, from that point I wanted to double it. So I added four more chips, an extra brick, an extra heat source, extra heat sink, you know, the whole thing. You can see it right there. Now we could get up to 12 volts. Before I did that, I thought it'd be a good idea to throw the thermal tape on so we don't lose any of the chips or there's no problem with the connection. So here it is all thermal taped together. Top and bottom of the chips all put together looks good. There's a side view. Then I briefly went back to the other stand just to test one at a time and give you volt ratings. It was at this point that I started having problems. Everything was fine at first, but then I ran this one a while and it eventually overheated. The problem essentially was that two of those oil burners, so six wicks, is too hot for that heat sink. It can sink the heat fine just using one oil burner or three wicks, but when you get it up to six it just gets too hot and the chips overheat. 
Unfortunately, you can't take it apart once you use the thermal tape or a lot of thermal glue. You pry it apart and the chips just break in half and everything goes everywhere. And then I literally had to chisel off the tape. It's on there so good, almost as good as super glue. So it took me about a half an hour of just chiseling away with a hammer and a chisel to, to push it all off, to sand it down, to buff it out, to get it all back to normal. So I finally got everything back to normal and decided to retool nope. the stand one it's more on time. There, man. Okay, so after all that testing, this is what I came up with for the final version. First, I went back to the copper strip because that just seems better than the aluminum for some reason. Second, I went back to just two chips per strip instead of three, four, five, and all that. Just two per, two per strip and use one heat source in the bottom, no more than three wicks. Now the unit can run either two 3-volt items or one 6-volt item. And if let's say you want to run a 5-volt item, like something you'd normally plug into the USB port in your computer, just extinguish like one or two of the flames. So burn like two candle flames under the two chips on both sides. And then you'll get more like 4.5 to 5 volts out of the unit. And then you can run things like USB fans, USB lights, and stuff like that. One of the best things about doing it this way is I've noticed if you just use one or two Peltier chips, you don't have to use any thermal glues or tapes. You just lay them side by side and the heat sink will lay totally flat on top of them as long as the piece of copper or your metal bar underneath, whatever you use, is totally flat, the chips will be nice and solid. So that's why I went with a design like this with the two and two because I've never had a chip burn out with the uh, just using one or two. The heat sinks always lay perfectly flat on there like that. Metal burners are super easy to make by the way. Again, it's just the tuna can and the lid. I just drilled one eighth inch holes in the bottom along there. Then you drop the wicks in where you want them and you literally just drop it in. And the lid holds the wicks in place and that's it. That's all you gotta do. You can do the double size ones too if you want to. Wicks are 100 pack for 5 bucks on Amazon, and you're good to go. You just cut them down to size and drop them in, over and over and over. These things should last a really long time. You can also save the extra part of the stem after you trim it down to size, and you can buy these extra metal bases by themselves and clip them on there. Then you could cut these in half and probably get like 3 wicks per wick total, so 300 wicks instead of 100. But even at 5 bucks for 100, great deal. By the way, these tuna can burners can be used for cooking too. Just grab a second lid, drop in five wicks like that, and check this out. This is a previous video of mine. Works awesome. Here's the Crisco burner one, also a previous bit of mine. Works the same way. Just grab a lid, cut the wicks, drop in some Crisco and light it up. Beautiful. And finally, here's the 12715 experiment. Alright, got the five candles under there. They're all hooked in series here. Four chips, big heat sink, good to go. There's one chip's voltage, about a half a volt. And two of them is just over one, 1 1.1. 1 .1. Three of them. 1.63 and 4 2.07 okay just for the heck of it I pulled those out and put the two 12706ers in there just to see how this works with the two of those 
and I'm getting 3.28, 3.29, 3.3 volts. Well, that's good to know. The 12715 chips, even though they're stronger and considered a much stronger chip, when you use them for thermoelectric generation, they're nowhere near as good as the 12706ers. All right, here it is, 1.47, 1.48 on the volts, and let me grab a quick shot of the amps. 0 0.32, 0 0.31, so 310, 320 milliamps, same as the 12706 chip, and it's just a lower voltage on these chips, so they're really not the best chip to use for this. I'm finding the 12706 is probably the best, followed by the 27145. All right, so just to wrap it up, wanted to mention one more time why I just used the two chips and why you can't use more than that without the thermal taper glue. That's because the heat sinks like to put all their weight on the end chips. So if you have like three or four in a row, that one in the middle or the two in the middle are always a little bit looser than the ones on the end. And that goes for whether the copper is thinner like this and bows a little bit or whether it's thicker like the eighth inch aluminum I was using, which doesn't bend at all. It's still the middle ones for some reason. They just won't sit flat. So then you have only, then the only choice with that would be using the thermal tapes or glue, but that's a terrible idea to put the, that on there because it's not necessary if you do it like this. And if you even have one chip go bad or anything go wrong, then ripping it apart's a nightmare and smoothing it out is almost impossible again. It's just not worth the hassle. Just go with two and two like this and then you're all set. Then if you have to replace a chip, it just takes two seconds and you're good to go. And just for the record, I've never burnt out a chip doing it this way.